Stab a bear in the motherfucking neck. But we still go drink in his honor. Oh god, yeah. What's up, feature players? It's Adam. And this is Tate, and welcome to Inebriated Antiquity. Another little side shot on our uh, FPC drinks. Yeah. Today we're going to drink and talk about some really fun history. We're going to drink Tennessee whiskey and talk about a Tennessee man. Oh yeah. Uh, today I am drinking the uh, single barrel select Jack Daniels. I'm drinking George Dickel's Bonded. This is the second version of theirs. Um, and today we are going to be talking about the man, the myth, the legend, Tiger, not that Tiger King, Whitehead. James Tiger Whitehead. James Tiger Whitehead. Um, born 1819. Not sure when. He just was born then. Yeah. Sometime that year. Uh, died 1905. Lived, what, 95? Uh, 96? 96. 96. In the foothills of Tennessee in the 1800s. He lived to 96 years old. Um, killed 99 bears. That's the just but, off the but, top. But wait. You might there's have just more. You you might have seen this this tombstone picture going around like, you know, Twitter or Pinterest or, or Reddit. It, it, it kind of became famous there for a little while. Yeah. But like this is so much deeper than Tiger's tombstone. Because um, killed 99 bears. We hope he rests well. We hope he he is at rest. Yeah, I'm like the other option. He's coming back like uh, King Arthur, ready for the the bear the, uprising. The bear uprising happens, and you know, the Lady in the Lake summons his rifle. Yeah, and his hand comes and grabs it, and he protects America from the bear uprising. And this is a man who lived in an age of muzzle load black powder rifles, and he killed he killed personally himself. 99 bears. And what was his assist stat? Assisted in the killing of another 115 bears. This dude had a soccer career out of bear killing. Yeah. I mean, one tiger. And, and one tiger. We, we haven't even mentioned the tiger yet. Yeah. Um, so, so apparently back in or somewhere around his, uh, his, his like 40s, 30s or 40s in uh, Bristol, Tennessee, there was a traveling circus. And their tiger got loose. As it, as it does, because you know, tigers are known, known to, to wander the Tennessee prison. hills. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Tennessee and tigers, I've, I've seen 15, 20 of them since I've been up there. Yeah. I mean, they were in zoos, but <laughs> tiger decided to hunt this one down. Yeah, so he went, James Whitehead went and hunted down a tiger. I've never seen a tiger in his life. Figured and from I'd then get... on was known as Tiger Whitehead. Yeah. Um, Another fun fact, his father's nickname was Wolf. Yeah. I know there, we can't find any historical yeah, context as to why. we're going so far back, there's not a whole lot of records to pull from. No. Tiger's mom started having kids at, what, 40, 42? Yeah. And her last kid was at 80. So these yeah. people were just apparently a different type of human. But, but Tiger's grandmother yeah, we had were, Tiger's dad when she was, she was 10. 10. Yeah. So I guess Tiger's dad made up for that by marrying a 40-year-old woman. So they kind of evened out. I don't, I don't the know. sheer generational gap between yeah. grandparents to parents at that point is insane. Yeah. They got a weird family tree, but still interesting. He named his nicknamed his rifle after Daniel Boone's rifle. Yeah, it was a tick, tick liquor. liquor. Yeah. Single shot, 52 caliber, muzzle loader. That you hunt bears with. That he hunted bears with. I can't imagine. Um, one wow. of the bears he was hunting shot it. It didn't <laughs> die. Instead, it was just pissed off. I mean, this is a straight up Red Dead 2 moment of a giant bear just barreling down on you. Yeah, not, so, not, a, not a good Tuesday. So Tiger takes Tick Liquor, shoves it in the bear's mouth. Then proceeds to pull out his hunting rifle and slit the bear's throat. Yeah, as you do. You know, I know no, out of all the bears not me. I've hunted, I, I've, been, I've hunted none. But I, I do know if I hunted bears, I would not hunt them with a knife. I have guns, and I have guns with more than one bullet that can shoot more than 50 yards. Yep. But this dude, and again, this dude, this 145-pound man, oh yeah, with his 70-pound balls, 
hunted these things through the foothills of Tennessee, which is nothing but mountains and woods, with a single shot musket loader. Wow. That's still my favorite story of Tiger. Okay, Tiger, for whatever reason, decided he's going to just take a trip up to Chicago. Chi Town, Chi -town. Windy City. And he was just walking down the road, minding his own business, with his rifle on his back, you know, as you do, because you never know when a bear is going to come out in Chicago. A few years later would be known as the home of the Chicago Bears. So he was preemptively hunting. Duh, bears. But the cops didn't like the fact that he had a rifle because apparently Chicago was not open carry back then. Apparently um, not open carry now. Not not open carry now. Carry. Chicago has horrible gun control. Yes. Yeah. But Tiger apparently didn't give a shit. Nope. So a cop came to him and Tiger decided to fight this cop for his gun. Not just, can Mike, just, not just fight him. Not just fight him. His Tiger's team. quote is, yes. as this officer accosted me, I prepared, prepared to, to commence me. battle. Battle. Not even a fist Tiger, fight. I salute you, sir. I do too. I mean, this dude was, he was a special kind of man. Oh, yeah. I mean, he married a special woman, Sally Garland. She became, or Sally Garland Chambers. She was a widower. Yep. He married her. She became Sally Garland Whitehead. They never had any kids. The one that they can think happened is they had one stillborn. Yeah. But on her gravestone, it says she's a mother to not only humankind, but also animal kind. For in her life, she gave her milk to two bears and a fawn. I, I can't tell if she uh, actually suckled bear cubs and I hope fawn, it's metaphorical. Or they had a bottle of some kind. I'm not sure, but... Either way, cheers to you too. Yeah. Because uh, bears, you know, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this guy also in a Johnny Cash song. Yes, Johnny Cash, uh, while touring in Tennessee, yeah. a friend of his uh, knew the Whitehead family because the Whitehead clan is apparently still huge in Tennessee. Yeah, it's all Tiger Valley and Tiger Creek and all yeah, that. Yeah, there was a, the, 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 the valley that uh, Tiger lived at where he actually owned a grist mill. He was, yeah. he was the guy that you, you know, brought your your grain or your corn to to have ground up. Because you know, you hunt bears, you you grind grain. Yeah, that's that, that was his. You do in life. But the valley, he, his little farmstead was in, was renamed uh, Tiger Valley because of him, and the creek that ran through it was renamed Tiger Creek because of him. Um, there's a uh, small township uh, nearby that's named Whitehead. Uh, yeah, his, his for his, him, his family is all through there, and they are very well known. Um, yeah. Looking through articles, there was apparently a Tiger Whitehead. I guess they just kept passing on the family name. Uh, early 2000s, that was like a local uh, governor, or not governor, a mayor, or oh, city cool. councilman, something like that. that. But yeah, they, they're, they're, the Whitehead is still living strong in, 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 the, uh, in, in that area. That's cool. But yeah, like, here's my thing about the Johnny Cash song, though. You know, one, it's funny. It's funny. It's, it's a it's a trippy song, but two. It was for a children's album. Yeah, Johnny Cash did a children's album. The, the was, Man in Black did a children's album. Yeah, and decided Tiger Whitehead was going to be one of the the stars of these songs. Yes, yeah. that's just how you do. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, man. Tiger Whitehead's buried in a cemetery that occupies pretty much where his farmstead was. There's only yeah. about a dozen different uh, graves there. It's all family stuff. Yeah. Um, apparently, you actually have to walk across a downed log to cross Tiger Creek, Creek yeah, to, cross to Creek. get to Tiger Valley Cemetery. Yeah. But if you're ever up that way, it's definitely worth the trip. Definitely worth the trip. I like the fact that, um, what was it, him and his nephew went to Knoxville? Went to Knoxville and were interviewed about the number Bear of bears Bear. they killed. Yeah. And, like, they called them the Mighty Nimrods. Or Minrods. Minrods. But I think they were supposed to be called the Nimrods, like the hunter from like the Bible. Yeah. And they just missed missed it up. Yeah. But it was funny that his nephew Andy, at this point in his time, had thirty five bear kills. Thirty five. Thirty five. Tiger had eighty seven bear kills. Yeah. And he was sixty five. So it seems to me that he slowed down later in life. Yeah. Well his his health started deteriorating, which comes to another famous story of uh, when he was kind of, 
in those last years of life, some of his friends, Tiger's 99 kills is all theoretical. Yes. He probably had killed more, but that was the most that he could confirm, yeah. basically through the pelts, and, pelts like and trophies and stories that, you know, yeah. like, well, remember that time you killed one that year? And it was, it was an estimate, yeah. but it was one he, once he kind of developed, he kind of went with that number and kept going. Yeah. And he always wanted to, he told a, a newspaper reporter that he, he was like, he was, a, his, a, it was right in like 90, 99, yeah, 99 97, 80 years old. And he tells him, was like, yeah, if I can just get three or four more, I'll just go ahead and cash in the check. You know, he's like, yeah, just give me three or four more and I'm ready to die. I'm ready to go on and be done with this life. But unfortunately, his health deteriorated and he was never able to get those three or four more bears. Um, a bunch of his friends decided to capture a bear and bring it onto his property chained so that he could kill his hundredth bear. Yeah. And Tiger famously was like, I'm not going to kill something that's not free. He's like, I'm, I'm not just going to kill some caged animal. He's like, I, I mean, so he was a hunter. Through he was a hunter. He was, he's going to be out there in the thick of it with that bear, just as much of a chance to kill him as he does of killing it. Um, you know, with his knife <laughs> or tick liquor, yeah. which is also one of my favorite stories. And it's probably one of the saddest stories yeah. uh, through, through all this. Um, Tick Licker was sold after uh, after, his passing. after Tiger's death for ten silver dollars. Yep. The guy who, the guy who purchased it he, he knew the story. He knew the story. He, he, he knew was, what this he, was. He wanted this gun this. preserved. Yeah. Uh, he want, there was you know it had been old and Tiger hadn't done anything in probably about 10, 15 years hunting, so it had a little rust on it, had a little damage. Uh, it still had the bare teeth marks on the barrel from you know where he had shoved it in the mouth of a bear. Yeah. Never this fixed that in all his years. The, this uh, the guy who bought it took it to a gunsmith to repair, and when he came back and the guy is like, "Here you go, I fixed it." He had taken off like six to eight inches of the barrel to get rid of the the bare teeth marks to try to repair it. The whole point of the rifle. It, the the fact that this 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 historical piece here was thoroughly destroyed by what was supposed to be oh, a, a restorer. Yeah, he just wanted the rust off, and that, that gunsmith ruined. Now, I'm going to say it's part of Americana, because he's not a very famous man. No. But he should be. Daniel Boone's original Tick Liquor is in a museum, yeah. fully restored, fully maintained, inside of like an argon-filled glass yeah, this guy display. Should be as well. um, I mean, he's every bit the hunter that Boone was. Yeah. Because Boone lied more than he told the truth, I'm oh, yeah. sure. But not old Tiger Whitehead. He was a true man, a true myth, and a true legend. Oh yeah. And I salute him. I, I salute. We are drinking Tennessee whiskey instead of his actual. He had an ale named after yeah. him. Yeah. And I tried to get it from the brewery that made it, but unfortunately, it is a it was a limited time thing. So instead, we're drinking Tennessee whiskey for one of the greatest Tennessee hunters that's ever lived. Cheers to Tiger White. Well, that's been it for Inebriate and Antiquity for today. I'm going to pour me a little bit more. I figured that's something to go. But we thank you all for coming by. We're going to do more. Um, should we talk about the whiskeys we're drinking? Sure. What you think of your birthday whiskey? Oh, very good. Very good smooth uh, sipping whiskey. Uh, yeah. Jack Daniels single barrel. Again, even if you're not really a Jack Daniels fan, I, I suggest giving it a try. Uh, a lot of upper end bars will carry it, you know, just like the uh, the Gentleman Jack, things like that. It's uh, like I said, if you like kind of that sweet bourbon, give it a try. It's 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 it's, it's really good. And I'm again drinking George Dickel Bonded. It's cool because there's a lot of like specific law that goes into Bond barrels whiskeys. It has to be at least four years old. It has to be exactly hundred proof has to be in Tennessee and it's it's very interesting whiskey. I like George Dickel because it's a it's a sweet Tennessee whiskey. It's got a lot of things like Jack Daniels, but I find it more get a little bit richer flavor. But the Jack Daniels is maybe a little bit smoother. Tennessee does have some weird they, they laws. got some interesting laws and interesting whiskeys. That might be an interesting episode just to if you guys want to see that put it down in the comments. Yeah absolutely. Uh, we can just get drunk and talk about weird ABC laws. Oh geez we could do so many episodes on that. But anyway, I've been Tate. 
I'm Adam. And this has been Inebriated Antiquity. Hope you like it, commented on it, subscribe to it, and we'll see you again next time. And remember, we and Bob, you subscribe. subscribe.